living quarters are just a short, happy trip away by means of this magnificent conveyance. If you will step aboard our air-conditioned magic carpet, you're about to embark on a tour in the enchanted land, which will be your home for the next 12 months. Magic seatbelts, away we go. in a building half a mile away. Would you rather walk him over? For a new boy, you seem to know an awful lot about this place. Well, I went to eight months last year, but I had to drop out. So I'm starting over again. Gentlemen, we're now approaching the surgical wing, ruled over by the fierce and powerful Dr. Dominic Riccio. Great man with a scalpel, but he eats interns for breakfast. I don't understand it, Maud. Why me? The board just picked the best man they could find to take mm -hmm. my place. With your help. With my help. I told you I would not accept your job. I accept it for you. I don't want to run this hospital or any other hospital. I'm not a diplomat. I'm a surgeon. But you need it everywhere, not just in surgery. <laughs> Dr. Gardner, you're going to drive me to tears, and I'm about to do an exploratory. You see that Reader's Digest article? It states that it's very bad for a patient to see his doctor cry. All right, all right. It seems to me you've got two choices. You can take over administration and run the whole show, or let a new man come in who doesn't know conditions here. And he'd be your boss. You were my boss. Who are you trying to kid? You may have run the hospital, but I was never your boss. Come on, what do you say, Don? If I did, if... Do they know I'd run it under my terms, my conditions? Everything but the budget. That runs you. One thing. I want to keep surgical service. Okay, but you won't have time to put on a Band-Aid. Mm hmm It's a deal. Thanks, Tom. Hey, look at here. A couple of real-life nurses. And pretty. Stop the tram! Have you missed me, girl? Mm, desperately. <laughs> oh, I wish I were twins, but don't give up hope. We'll find a way. Love always finds a way. Oh, it's nice to have you back, Alec. Yeah, it's nice to be back. Ow. Will they never leave me alone? Say, doctor, you were taking us to the intern's quarters today, right? Don't be so eager, friend. You got a whole year ahead of you. Yeah, and I came here to study medicine. I already know how to kiss girls. <laughs> temper, temper. Drive on. Whee! Gentlemen, we are now approaching the finest living quarters at New North Hospital. 96 sparkling rooms with magnificent views, and each room a private shower. Hey, that's the New North Hilton. How much are tips in a place like this? Like a country club. As I was saying, the finest living quarters at New North Hospital for nurses. What nurses? Interns live there. Interns live where? You're kidding. We call it Shangri-La. Don't mind if I call it something else, do you? Oh, boy. Now, now, don't let that depressing exterior fool you. Beneath that apparent shambles, you'll find an interior equally busy. What did I get for rent? Nothing. It's not worth it. This looks terrible. Uh, well, uh, Gee, I gotta live here for a year? Now, now, I admit it's not much to look at, but after you live with it for a while, you'll really be miserable. Yeah. Hi, ma'am. Hello. Hi. My name is Mrs. Hitchcock. I'm the housekeeper. Mother, it's me. I'm home, and I brought some friends with me for dinner. Oh, my God. Not you again. What's the matter, Ma? Don't you recognize me? I recognize you. I recognize you. <laughs> Gentlemen, take any vacant room. Except the one near the phone. That's my old room. You'll find linen and bedding inside. And it's going to be the other side. Don't right. bother me. Come on, we'll take a look at my room, huh? Just a minute. Oh, it's just the way I remember it. The cracked plaster, the leaky faucet, the horrible smell. I'm touched. But you, you're beautiful. Come here, you mad, impetuous no, girl. You Dr. Nuts. Don't sit down here. Oh. 
Ron, will you take your seats, please? All right, it looks like we're all here. Good morning. I'm Dr. Duane. Let's get right to it. The hospital supplies you with a number of things. It replaces free of charge the bulbs and batteries in your ophthalmoscope, the blood pressure machine and so forth you'll find on the floor, ask the nurse. The hospital supplies you with anything you need for a sterile procedure. Considine can show you where to pick up your batteries and junk after rounds. You need assume no responsibility unless you want to. There is always a resident available who will take over whatever responsibility you feel inadequate or unwilling to assume. Now that's the speech. All right, doctors, this is your first morning on surgical rounds. If you will follow me, let's see how many patients you can refrain from distressing. Retractor. Retractor. Clamp. Clamp. Scalpel. Oh! Oh! My hand, you, Doctor, you're the reason. You're the reason. Well, you know, I don't break you, tell man, you, and you hurt sorry. my hand, my poor. I'm oh, sorry. The patient, Doctor, quickly, the patient. Uh huh. The missing links. <laughs> There it is. Boy, this guy's really confused. Doctor, the scissors. Come on. Give me the scissors, please. Never mind. Thanks. Oh, uh, the pressure 60 over 40, yes. the respiration 16, the yes, pulse. Yes. The pulse is 10 minutes after 6. <laughs> Quick, mouth to mouth resuscitation. <laughs> Not me, you idiot, the patient. <laughs> I hardly know the man. Doctor, doctor, I think our patient's on fire. <laughs> a very important announcement to make now. As you all know, our supervisor, Dr. Morton Gardner, has retired. And I am very proud to announce that the new straw boss of this circus is Dr. Dominic Riccio. Let's have a round of applause for him. Doctors, ladies. I'm sure you all learned several new and revolutionary surgical techniques from this operation you just witnessed. <laughs> techniques which I hope none of you will apply. I want to thank Nurse Dee Dee Loomis and her students for inviting me to this party. It gives me a chance to speak to you informally on a most serious subject. Now, New North Hospital is known throughout the medical world for two reasons. First, our high professional standing. And second, we have just concluded 15 uninterrupted years of running this place at a loss. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's no laughing matter. Now, it's been suggested that we throw out half the patients and save a lot of money. Well, the board didn't look too favorably on this idea. I suggested that we add more patients and cut some of the luxuries presently enjoyed by this staff. And that's exactly what's going to happen. You'll receive full details shortly. I want to welcome you and your support. Thank you. 
like the prime minister getting the people ready for his austerity program. Now, the real reason for this bash is a kind of a 4th of July get acquainted party. Uh, we have soft drinks and we have uh, sandwiches. We're going to have music and dancing. So when I count three, I want you to pick up your chairs and make a lot of room, okay? When I say three, everybody count three with me. One, two, three. Say, uh, that's about taking me up to your room. Or, or any room, just so I can change my costume. Uh, and all these years, I'd always assumed interns were taught to read. Who's smoking? Besides, this isn't your first year here, Dr. Constantine. You know the rule. Sure I do. I was hoping you didn't. How'd you know my name? Edie Loomis gives the student nurses a welcoming address of her own. And a warning. The warning is mainly about you. Well, she should know. This party is for interns only. Well, I'm just protecting my interests, son. You know the reputation you interns had. The aging resident in obstetrics, huh? How quickly he forgets his old friends. Hello, Alec. What's known to baby business, little man? Yeah, not a thing. Same two models year after year. Speaking of babies, I mean, if it's not too personal, when can we expect the first heir to the worship millions? It is too personal. But you can quote the bride as saying there's no news yet, but we have hopes. Well, don't wait too long. Uh, delivering babies can't be having as much fun as making them. No. Uh, See you. Uh, you know that boy occasionally comes up with a good idea. Come on. Hey, Lou, honey, not here. There's a time and a place. Oh. <laughs> How about this? Lou. Honey, I was just thinking. About what? Babies. Babies? Suppose we can't. Oh, where's the problem? If you can't have kids, I'll get rid of you like an oriental potentate. Or an impotentate. <laughs> I'm serious. Honey, you are married to a specialist in the field. Now, if there's any problem, well, uh, we'll start drawing on the resources of science, okay? Charts and graphs? Well, sure. Why ignore the benefits of research? Well, if the Fiji Islanders manage to have babies without the aid of research. Honey, the... The Fiji Islanders have uh, uh, fertility gods and, and things like that. Now, we're too civilized for that, aren't we? <laughs> Where was I? Oh, yeah. Uh, honey. Mm. <laughs> what? Honey. Yeah. Just this one last time. Let's, let's take potluck like the Fiji Islanders. We got a deal. coffee for me. That no. was very thoughtful of you, Miss uh, Rogers. This is for Dr. Riccio. Oh, we shouldn't be drinking coffee. Very bad for him. He's got an ulcer. Didn't you know that? Now, about Dee Dee's warning. Keep circulating, doctor. I'm sure you'll find some girl who can't resist testing the truth of a wet paint sign. Oh, Miss Rogers, those stories you heard, that was last year. The paint should have dried by now. And if it hasn't? I'll, uh, buy you a bottle of turpentine. We'll see. Hello, Mrs. Mace. Hi, Miss German. How's Mr. Wolanski today? I'm afraid it's just a question of time. They're shipping him home Wednesday. Oh, fifth floor. in school. You know what it is? <laughs> She's a 
clever kid. You take most ashtrays, they just sit there and do nothing. Nice, huh? Mm -hmm. How are my boys? Fine. They're getting along just fine. They tell you when they're letting me out? Of course not, Mr. Wolanski. A social worker has nothing to do with medical matters. Doctors. Everything's a big military secret. You sure you're not hiding something? Of course not. Well, if I'm getting out of here soon, I... I should be able to go back to work in three or four weeks, huh? I suppose so. Sure. Then how come you got my wife a job? Well, she asked me to. Well, why does she need a job if I'll be back to work in three or four weeks? Level with me, damn it! I don't know if they let me out because I'm well or if they're just sending me home to die. I, I'm terribly sorry. This must be very special to you, and look what I did. I must be in great shape. I must be in great shape if they operate and send me home after eight days, right? I don't know anything about that, Mr. Wolanski, but I would think so. Tell me! Please don't ask me any more questions. It's true, isn't it? I'm never going to get well. Doctor! Doctor Ferrelli! Oh, take it easy. Just take a knife and then take it. 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 Take it
Hey, Alec, can I borrow these? You can rent them. Results guaranteed or your money cheerfully refunded. All right, stick him up. <gasps> Look out, he's here again. Uh-oh, now you've done it. You've unmasked the lone doctor. Well, let's walk back here and see what you're up to today. Good morning, nurse. Doctor. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Oh, this is fantastic. Another Grandma Moses. Let's mm. keep that up. Well, let's see what we have back here. I'm afraid Freddy isn't very cooperative, Doctor. We just can't get him to paint. Nurse, I'm surprised at you. Don't you understand modern art? This is an abstraction. Simplicity itself. Now, you got the right idea, young fellow. You keep painting what you want to paint. Would you like to see what we're doing over here? Yeah, yeah, this looks interesting. Painting and everything. Yeah, what is this down on that section in there? The art. You did. Did he? Simplicity itself. Well, for goodness sakes. Uh, thank you, Freddy. Uh, you know, I, I'm going to uh, save this jacket, and when you become a famous painter, it'll be worth a lot of money. <laughs> hey, Alan. Hey, Pete. I got a problem. Petty thief, part-time prostitute. Referred from county probation. Hemiplegia left side. One previous attack, but no organic basis found. What's your problem? She wants a white man to examine her. That's what she says. The real reason is you got a lousy bedside manner. No, I really think she's prejudiced. <laughs> Does that bother you? Not a bit. I got 35 patients upstairs, they're all colorblind. <laughs> Thanks, Alex. See you later. So, Stella? Yes, Doctor. My God, look at this. Like, don't they have any grown-up for real doctors around here? I'm a real doctor. You're an intern, and I'm not going to let you touch me. Come on, Stella. Sooner or later. No chance, Daddy. Oh, come on. That's how I get my kicks checked. Like, when I was a little boy, my mama didn't give me no toys to play with, so now I got this problem, dig? You're hip. Go, man. Examine. What's your problem? Well, like, uh, like this side. It ain't moving, Doc. Mm -hmm. Cool. Play that again, man. This is a tuning fork, Stella. I'm going to touch you with it, and you tell me if you feel anything. Okay. Ooh, like electricity, Daddy. Good. Tingly. I like it. Like you're just not getting through to me. All right. Nowhere. Like, forget it. All right, let's try Babinski reflex. <laughs> oh, yeah. I read you, Doc. Toes flex downward, it's normal. What do you feel now, Stella? Nothing. Let's try it again. <laughs> okay. Negative, pal. That side is dead, man. All right, Stella. Just one more little look and then we're through. Nurse, may I see the patient's chart, please? Mm -hmm. Pinpoint pupils, puncture marks in the arm. She's a drug addict faking the paralysis. Take the 
Take this up to isolation. I want to try something. All right, Stella. I'm going to take you for a little ride. Where? Up to neurology for more complete tests. Crazy, baby. You're pretty cute, hey? I mean, like, uh, we could make it to outer space and back. No re-entry problem. They? Crazy. Anyway, like it, uh, it wouldn't be for money. But, uh, hey, maybe you could give me a present. Present? Something you just sort of pick up around here, maybe? Oh, you mean, uh, I get you a fix and then you and me... Yeah, yeah. Uh, I give you a swing in time. Just get me some stuff. What do you say, Doc? Only one thing bothers me, Stella. Yeah? Well, it's easy enough to get your blast, but uh, what about the payoff? I mean, your left side like it is. Not many kicks for me, Dick. Oh, well, I'm okay. I I'm okay, see? See? I it's just an act. It was the only way I could get in here. They got stuff lying all over the place. Come on, Doc, we haven't got much time. I'm falling out of orbit. Here we are, Stella. Well, what are we doing here? We got one for withdrawal. Not cold turkey! Stella, this may be hard for you to understand, but uh, I'm really doing you a favor. I hope your damn nose cone falls off! What a dirty, lousy, rotten trick to pull on somebody! Dad, get out of here! I don't want to talk to Let's go back to work. Here. Uh-oh, I don't see clock there. <laughs> Shh, come on, now, knock it off. I can't help it. It's funny. funny. Look, just keep it down. Okay. I'm going to go check and see if clocks are out. Watch the lights. The lights. Don't sign it. It's all clear. Come on. Well, here it is, sweetheart. It's our new home. It's, it's not very pretty, but uh, you can't beat it for price and location. Are you sure it's all right, Phil? I mean, you won't get into any trouble? Only if we're caught. Well, what about the other men living here? Won't they mind? Mind? Won't they? Hey, I want you to look at something, Mrs. Osterman. Now, if you were a man, would you object to something like that, living in your bachelor quarters? That's huh? very sweet, dear. But this is a crazy idea. All right, let me ask you something. Do you want to go back to Ohio? Of course not. I want to stay with you. Well, can we afford to rent an apartment? No. Do you want to stay married to me? Yes. Well, then it's a simple matter of logic. If A, you want to stay with me, and B, we can't afford to live anywhere else, then C, we have to live here. QED. You're crazy, but I love you. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> it's us. It's them. It's all right. Uh, ah, there's a spot for it. There's a spot for what? Shh. Ah, it's not a Rembrandt, but it'll cover the crack. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Osterman, would you step forward, please? Oh, 
Yeah. <clears throat> uh, Mrs. Osman, ma'am? Uh, we'd like to make a presentation. As our secret roommate, we feel that you are entitled to a most valuable gift, a free pass to the hospital cafeteria. Oh, thank you. That's free. And to make you feel welcome, these flowers. Oh, they're lovely. Phil, do we have something to put them in? Mm -hmm. This will do. <laughs> <laughs> the other way. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, th thank you, fellas. It's very practical. <laughs> now I'd like to say a few words. Uh, later. Late now. Uh, uh, listen, thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Now just sit up and you feel a lot better. Oh, oh, oh boy. Lick. Take it easy, sir. The doctor will miss what are you going to use? Six on nylon. Mm -hmm. Here. Let me have the vacuum tainer. Hurry, doctor. Eh? What's his blood pressure? 55 systolic. Mm -hmm. If you get this type and cross matched, I'll take over here. He's my patient, I can handle it. You're doing a fine job, Doctor. But we're getting into some touchy and delicate work. I have a feeling you can handle it. But I know I can. Now move. This patient's going to need blood. Orderly, get this tight and cross match. Stop. Stop! What are you doing here? It's I taken I... care of. I came here to learn surgery. I already know how to run errands. Doctor, you know nothing. Hey, Tony! How about a beer? No, thanks, Brad. I feel like walking. See you later. Right. Don't I know you? The social worker. You live here? No, I was just visiting one of my cases. The Wolanski family, remember? The Wolanski? Your patient. Well, the day we met under those less than charming circumstances. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How, how's he doing? He's dead. When? This morning. I was just going over the funeral arrangements with Mrs. Wolanski. That's some job you got. Hey, look. You know, would it, would it be any help, you know, if I went up and talked to her? No, I just got her to sleep. But it was a very nice thought. You surprised me, Doctor. Oh? You actually care about Mrs. Wolanski's feelings. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was also trying to apologize for the way I sounded off at the hospital. Why? You happen to be right. Now, I know you're Dr. Pirelli. Do you have a first name? Hey, how about that? We never met. It's Anthony. Tony. <laughs> well, how do you do, Tony? How do you do? My name's Nancy Terman. Well, uh, Nancy Terman, in my uh, professional opinion, I'd say that you could use a drink. True? True. Do you have a car? No. No, not with me. You got one? Right over there. Hey, ship! Do you know them? It's all right. It's all right. Do something for you? Thought I recognized the ship. Dock the ship to you. Cool. Is that too much? From a switchblade to a... Uh... What do they call that razor you pill pushers use? Scalpel. Yeah. 
Doc Scalpel. Oh, no, Doc Pill Pusher Scalpel. Hey, tell me, are you still as good with that slicer as they say you was in a rumble? As good as ever. Uh-uh. Second best now. They could take you easy. We'll never know, will we? Now, a few gentlemen will excuse us. Sure, sure. It's nice talking to you, Doc. You don't mind my saying. That's some cute lady you got there. You don't mind my saying that, do you, cute lady? That's it, kid. Fun time is over. Hey, Doc, that's no way to treat a customer. I was gonna bring you all kinds of business. You know, like, uh, if I ever got one of my chicks in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> These aren't my regular office hours. Doctor's out. Let's go. Hey, Doc, what's the hurry? I never got the cute lady's name. Hey, Doc, my knee hurts. Hey, Doc, I'm sick. Doctor, I'm sick. I'm a doctor. I didn't know whether to be afraid or to laugh at them. They were bored. Just looking for a few kicks. Well, just the same, I'm glad we're away from there. You're new at this, aren't you? Your job. How did you guess? You just look new. <laughs> What's a shiv? A knife. They called you shiv, why? I come from the neighborhood. They used to call me that when I was a kid. Why? They called me Shiv because I was pretty good with a knife. I cut a few people. That what you want to know? Well, I, I guess I was cross-examining you. I'm sorry. That's all right. I am sorry. Let's have that drink. I'll give you the entire case history, okay? Doctor's orders? Doctor's orders. Gentlemen, I bring tidings. Gather around. Read it and weep. What's up? It's our new chief, boss man Richo and his flying economy wave. Well, they can't cut my salary. I have a contract. Routine lab tests will no longer be run. All tests must be ordered and signed by the chief of service. Personal clothing will no longer be sent to the hospital laundry. We are giving up our lease on the parking lot. Interns will use street parking or a commercial lot. And you want to bet these are just Riccio's opening shots in an undeclared war? Yeah, but what kind of general declares war on his own army? Yeah, there's no room. What do you call low? That's for doctors. MD, medical doctor. Come on, you know me. You know this car. And you know the new regulation. Staff doctors, not interns. You'll have to use the public lot across the street. I don't have a dollar. Then drive around till you find curb space. That could take an hour. I'm on duty in 10 minutes. That's your problem? <laughs> Just what do you think you're doing? Hold that. Oh, you're pretty smart. You're all just alike. You know I'm going to report this, don't you? Name, rank, and serial number. According to the Geneva Convention, that's all you're entitled to. The cost of the chain will be deducted from your next check. In the future, you'll find it cheaper to pay for public parking. May I leave now, Doctor? Not yet. I've had other complaints about you. Neglect of duty. What duty? Testing blood, cleaning lab slides, taking pulse and temperature, removing splinters? If that's what you're assigned to do, that's what you'll do. I didn't duck all that scut work to go nightclubbing. I put an extra time in surgery, attended twice what the number of lectures, and anybody else. right to pick and choose. Now, you've seen our rating sheet. In addition to professional competence, we rate all our interns for work habits, moral and ethical character, personality, supervisory ability, personal appearance, and overall performance. Seven points, doctor, and only one for professional competence. I guess I'm lucky you don't rate family breeding. 
And we don't rate wit and repartee. Now you look, Pirelli. I'm taking this time for one reason. I don't want to lose what might be a good surgeon because of the character deficiencies. Just teach me medicine, doctor. Leave the problem of molding my character to my priest. Pirelli! You break one more rule and you're out for good. When you work in this hospital, you do things my way. Uh, Tony, Tony, I'd like for you to make OB rounds with me. I wonder if you'd wait outside for just a minute. Be right with you. <laughs> you know, um... Now you I look, think... Worship. You're closer to these fellas than I am. What's eating that guy? You want an honest answer or one that'll make you feel good? Now, don't play games with me. You're no longer labor. You're on management side now. Okay. It's not just Tony. The whole staff's complaining. Mm hmm? About what? Your economy program. The feeling is you're pressing too hard. Well, I've just begun to press. All right, thank you very much, Doctor. A surgical knot inside a matchbox with two fingers. Get it. Oh, oh, it's like the Indian rope trick. You know, you hear a lot of stories about it, but no one's actually seen anybody do it. <laughs> There's an old saying, friend. Put your money where your mouth is. Uh -huh. What? Well, that's pretty good. Right. Why don't you write that down? Here's the money. One, two. There's the mouth. <laughs> that's very funny. We got a bet. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. All right. Two fingers? Uh huh. One hand, pal. One hand. Would you please hold the box for me? Delighted. Mm -hmm. Don't be assistance. nervous. <laughs> yes, you ready? Uh huh. Yeah. Put the hand behind. I'm gonna get the street. And we are one. Get the thumb Just, out of there. The thumb is not in. Just watch closely. A twist. And. Hey! Holy wow. Well, that's a good one. <laughs> Would uh, anyone else like to do it? Oh, no. Hey, Tony, how about you? No, thanks. We were just leaving. Oh, wow. <laughs> Relaxing, Tony. I don't need it. Everybody needs it. Doctors, most of all. Look! I've already had four lectures today. I don't need another one. Honey, don't worry about it. Those guys live their lives, I live mine. But we understand each other. Believe me. I believe you. But sometimes I feel a little guilty having all of your free time these past two weeks. Makes me look like a very greedy woman. Well, I'm a very greedy man. I got just two things. That hospital, what I can learn there, and you. And nothing else matters. Nobody, nothing. Yes, Doc. Hey, George. Yeah? Radiology wants you and Rise to stack. Oh, no rest for the weary. Did you leave the dark room door open again? <laughs> Just what in the hell does stat really mean? It's Latin for statum. It means immediately. They couldn't be bothered just to say immediately. It wouldn't be professional. We'd sound just like anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> Having a good time? Mm, wonderful time. Me too. Let's see, this is our, uh, our third date, isn't it? Uh-huh. Say, honey, I uh, have a little problem. I wonder if you'd help me with it. Actually, it's part of some testing I'm doing. It's kind of a You mean game. those ink blots to tell whether a girl's ready and willing? Hmm? <laughs> Why, that's simply absurd with me. What? Well, who needs tests? Believe me, baby, I'm yours. Without even asking? Well, of course you asked. Your eyes, your attitude, everything about you. And, honey, I'm ready. R-E-D-D-Y. Well, don't just stand there. Do something. Oh. Come on. Come on, where? 
take us someplace. Come on. Wait a minute. You don't understand. I hope you didn't get the impression that I'm a pushover. Oh, no. I mean, I, a man has to prove that I mean as much to him as he means to me. Oh, when's that? Oh, you know, baby. You know. And, oh. Okay. Okay, I, uh, I get the message. Uh-uh. You didn't get it all. Lou, you're too quiet. Gloria. Sterility? But all my tests were okay. It's not your test. Read the name. Oh, Lou, how awful. Are you sure? Maybe there's some mistake. No mistake. Well, that's the second series of tests, Gloria. And, uh, well, that's it. No children. Not this year. Not ever. At least not with me. Don't talk like that, Lou. Gloria. Excuse me, Dr. Worship. You're wanted in OB. Okay, just a minute. Honey, I want you to tell me something. You tell me honestly. Now, if you had known about this before... Honey, I know now. And if it'll make you feel any better, we'll get married again tomorrow. See you later. I want you to make sure that the patient's medical needs are met fully and more. The tightness of the budget only applies to luxuries and frills. I understand, Doctor. Morning, Doctor Richard. Morning, Doctor Dwayne. Would you like to conduct the rounds? No, no, please, go ahead. I'll just watch. Very good. All right, if you gather around, please, doctors. Good morning. Uh, this patient was admitted a few minutes ago, complaining of abdominal pain and anorexia. The admitting doctor notes direct rebound tenderness in the lower right quadrant. Temperature is 101. Is there anything uh, further that you think we ought to know? Widen differential. All right. Uh, why? Sounds like a hot appendix. And it does. What would you do? I'd operate immediately. How about you? So would I. Uh, Dr. Duane, may I ask a question? Certainly. Is there some procedure any of you doctors could suggest before surgery? I'd, uh, I'd examine the patient. Splendid. How about you? Dr. Duane said the patient had been examined by the admitting physician. Well, your faith in your colleagues is absolutely touching. But any surgeon who doesn't conduct his own examination before surgery is only doing half the job. Right, continue, doctor. Are they all doctors? <laughs> we don't sell too many tickets to the general public, miss. <sighs> Excuse me, I just want to move this down for the examination. Now, I'm going to test you for tenderness. You let me know if you feel anything at all, all right? All right. No. Anything right here? No. Feel any pain? No. I'm sorry. For what, doctor? Causing pain? It's a very important symptom and guide. We need pain. Don't ever forget that. Well, thank you, doctor. Proceed. Thank you. All right, continue, Dr. Osterman. do 
too, and ringing bells at one in the morning. I'm terribly sorry to disturb you, but I've been trying all day to reach Mrs. Wolanski. I was here this afternoon and earlier again this evening, and there was no answer. I'm worried about her. A sister's sick, and the kids and her are staying over there. Uh, would you happen to know where that is? No! See, I'm uh, paying a lot more attention to the grind this year. There's a lot of pressure, a lot of pressure. In fact, uh, Dr. Ritchie is waiting for me right now, but but I'll call you, honey. I will. Promise. Oh, yes, yes. Hey, yeah, I promise. I'll call. Uh, <clears throat> uh, pardon me, is Laura Rogers around? Just a moment. Hello, Dr. Considine. Oh, no. Laura, there's someone Hello. here to see you. Hi. See you tonight? Sure, it's a good movie play. Oh, uh, we'll go to a movie, too. A, a just a movie. Hey, honey, I haven't even looked. I mean, really looked at another woman in, uh, 24 hours. I know, it's amazing. A and I'm impressed, really. Well, what's holding up the parade? Please be patient, I have to be sure. Just a little while longer. I'm almost positive. Okay. Come here. I gotta go now. I'm on OB today. <sighs> Mrs. Mark, you, you concentrate on one thing. That beautiful baby you're gonna have in about an hour. The doctor worship, you wanted an emergency receiving immediately. Let's move, Tony. Tony! Hemorrhaging a ring. Oh my God, Nancy! Uh, Nancy! Uh, Nancy! Get him out of here! Yes. Right, Tony, let's go. Move! Come on! Come on! Let's go! Get out of here! Wait a minute! Hey, you relax. You can't do any good in there. It's all right, nurse. You all right? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Where did it happen? We found her in an alley off 18th Street. I guess she'd been lying there most of the night. Who's on the case? I don't know, Doc. All I did was bring her in. I'm going out for a while. Call me in and report me safe. This is none of my business, boys. Let the police have it, huh? Police? They couldn't find their butts with both hands and a flashlight. So wait a second, now. Let me explain something. Come here. <laughs> Shh! <laughs> Don't wiggle. 
The light's better. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, she's beautiful. <laughs> hey, fellas, I don't know if we should go through with this. Hey, what do you mean? Oh, oh, you can't chicken out now. No. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 there yeah. she oh. is. <laughs> Miss America. Charles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, yeah. uh, oh uh, Mrs. Hitchcock, I, I thought I heard somebody knocking. <laughs> Uh, you sure keep the place spick and span, Mrs. Hitchcock. <laughs> well, I try to do my best. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right, but keep it down. Keep it down. Here, put these on now. What? Who's going to know? Well, you will. They're going to do wonders for your confidence. <laughs> I will not. Now, there are limits, you know. Hey, Ali, come on. Let me put that on. Put this on, Ali. Go ahead. What's the girl? Let me get you the whole thing. Hey, just watch your hands, please. I'm getting you straight. I knew you had a woman living in here. I'm reporting you all to Dr. Riccio. And you, young lady. Just what are you going to report, Mrs. Hitchcock? Dr. Considine? Uh, uh, yes, uh, Mr. Hitchcock, uh, uh, Dr. Considine's going to a, uh, to a uh, masquerade party and we're getting him fixed up. You know, we gotta keep the door locked. Hey, you know what? I'm gorgeous. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Still don't see how you're gonna make it. You know, the entire history of this hospital, no man has ever gotten past the main desk of the nurses' quarters. And the lobby is littered with the bones of those who've tried. Yep. We finally got you hooked on a bad bet. Now, if you do make it past the main desk, you got 30 minutes to get to the third floor and back. And you bring us back some proof, right? Let's go. Got everything you need? Mm hmm Whoops, wait a minute. Do you always carry a screwdriver in your bag? Doesn't everybody? No. Would you mind turning around? Oh, well, well, how about it? Hey, hey, hey. You know something? I wish I turned around. Mm -hmm. Let's go. You're never gonna make it out. Care to double all bets? No, thank you. Let's, Let's go. go. Right. This is Hitchcock. Forget the sweater. Thank you. He's going to a masquerade party? That's right. A lot of strange things going on around here. She's getting too suspicious. We're going to have to be even more careful. Especially now. I'm going to have a baby. A baby? You're going to have a baby? A babe? Hey, that's wonderful. Hey, fellas, we're gonna have a big, big time at the masquerade party. Isn't this a little out of your way, Sergeant? The fella you're looking for is somewhere out there. If you don't mind, Doctor, I'm a little tired and I've got a lot more to do today. A whole week since it happened. Don't you think you flatheads could have gotten a line on him yet? Let me tell you something, doctor. First, policemen don't like to be called flatheads. Can we agree on that for openers? Okay. Second, and this is the reason I'm here, you're not doing us a bit of good prowling around that neighborhood every night. And third, what do you know? That his name's Beep and he's disappeared. That's beautiful. You're quite the indignant taxpayer, aren't you? Just a second. Now, I know it's a big city and you got lots of problems. But you better get him before I do, or else there's not going to be much left of him to put in jail. Friendly piece of advice, Doctor. I know where you come from, but you're not in that jungle now. Don't let yourself slide back into it. Anything new? Cops are only smart in movies. Well, here's some good news for you. Nancy wants to see you. You mean it's okay? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. For a few minutes. Thanks, Lou. visitor. 
Well, we'll fix that. I'll see that a social worker drops by every day. Jokes in a sick room? As a young and pretty philosopher once said, even doctors have to relax. She was right. Hi. Hello. All right, get set, Alec. Here comes a group. What group? That's only three. Three is a group. Go on. money as a, a, a process server, and this is the only way I could get in. Process server? Yeah. Oh, I get it. And uh, how many subpoenas did you serve today? Now, uh, well, actually, you're the first one. <laughs> Good. One thing I can't stand is a tired process server. Now, but, but, you shimmer now. Alec, why? Well, your, uh, your roommate might come in. She's gone for the weekend. Any uh, other objections? Well, I don't know. Us both being girls and all. Oh, Alec. Mm. Hey, Bobby, can I borrow your hair brush? Ah, ah! Oh! Wait a minute! Don't jump to any conclusions! You know what you are. A tramp. A male pushover. Laura! Laura, I can explain! Oh. 
Huh? Alan! Here, hold this. I'll explain to you later. Private game? Grab a cue. Quarter on the five, half on the nine. Okay? Okay. And you spot us at the break. Why? You guys seem pretty good. Yeah, but we hear you're better. And you wouldn't want to get a reputation as a pool hall hustler. Now, would you, doctor? Well, you know how it is. They don't pay us much money. We hear you've been asking around. Your girl? Yeah. See, that's tough. You got any idea? Got a pretty good description. I'll know him when I see him. I don't know. That kind of thing's pretty tough to trace. Now, if a guy knocks over a filling station, right away you see you're spreading around too much loot, you know? But a rape. <laughs> What's a guy got to show for it after? Left occiput anterior. Left blade, left hand. Hold it, Gloria. Right blade, right hand. All right. Gently. Gently. Cyanotic. Fundal pressure. Let's get this kid out of here in a hurry. Clamps. Cut. Okay. Hold that, Gloria. 
she's still not breathing. Tracheal catheter. Pull my mask down. She's put the baby up for adoption. I think I can arrange it for you. Hey, that's great. Gloria, did you hear that? What do you think? No, thanks. I'd rather wait. Rather wait? For what, a miracle? Well, she's a little upset now. You follow through on that adoption. I'll convince her. You know, I don't think adopting that baby is such a bad idea. Do you want just anybody's children? But she'll be ours. She's almost ours now. She wasn't breathing and we gave her life. We only gave her breath. Her real parents gave her life. And what kind of people are they? A couple of weaklings who didn't have the character to control their impulses. Well, she didn't even want her child. Well, I don't want it either. Hey. What happened to you? I ran into a door. Who is it? Young Pirelli, bearing glad tidings. I'll be with you in a minute. Come on, what are you doing? I'll never tell. Ta -da. Hey, lipstick, everything. You look beautiful. Tony. Oh, what happened? I told you, when I fall in love... You were looking for them, weren't you? Looking? I wasn't looking. This hospital is like a small town. You know how news and gossip gets around. What do the police say? They made the standard speech, you know. Uh, lay off, be nice, don't be a policeman. They happen to be right. I don't want to see you hurt. And your work here at the hospital is too important for you to waste time on revenge. I don't think the time is wasted. Oh, Tony. Well, let's be realistic about all this. We can't change what's happened. What's done is done. But it's over. I'd like to think about the future now. Fair enough. And speaking of the future, they're letting you out of here tomorrow morning. Now, how about that? Oh, that's wonderful. And not only that, the nurses have invited you to a party. A baby shower for Madeline Osterman. When? Two weeks from today. Uh, Dr. Grant should thinks it'll be good for you, and uh, so do I. How about it? I'd love to go, on one condition. Yeah? That you promise me no more fights. I'll try. But only because I love you. I just did my hair. Oh. Sorry. What's that? That is our contribution to Madeline's baby shower. But I thought this party was strictly female. Yeah, well, that's what Dee Dee thinks, but the boys have other ideas. Now, come on, get ready. We're gonna be late. I'm not going, Lou. 
You're kidding. You're half-dressed already. Well, I've changed my mind. I don't think I'd be much fun at a baby shower. You mean you'd go alone, but you wouldn't go with me, is that it? No, that's not it. I just don't feel very well. Gloria, look, I know this... I know this isn't easy for you. It's no picnic for me, either. We have a problem, yes. We also have a solution. That little baby we delivered... Not that again, please, Lou. I don't want a baby from an adoption bureau. I want it from here. Well, the reality is that if you stay married to me, you cannot have it from there. Now, fate has dealt you such a lousy hand, you're going to spend the rest of your life crying about it, right? You really don't understand me, do you? Don't you know a woman's real function is to have children? I know what a woman's real function is, Gloria. That I've lost that function? All my life I took care of myself so I could have strong, healthy children. I picked a handsome, intelligent, healthy young man for a husband. You sound like the head of a Nazi breeding camp. That's not fair. Not fair. Not fair. What happened to that sensible girl I married? You picked me because I was healthy. I picked you for a lot of other reasons. One being, I thought you were mature enough to weather a hurricane, and instead you fold up at the first sign of a breeze. Gloria, I, I think motherhood to you is some kind of badge of honor. Look, everybody, look what I've produced. Well, if you dropped a baby every nine months, you'd still have a hell of a long way to go to be a wife and a woman. Where are you going? To the party, to get drunk, maybe. Maybe if I wrap my brain in a blanket of alcohol, I'll feel like a man again. Let's see. Look, it's more presents. Oh, it's more presents. Oh, the baby has a girl. It'll be a girl. It'll be a girl. I don't know what to say. You've all been so... Dee Oh. You see, it happens every time. I mean, you, you break your neck to try and make someone happy, and they start crying. You got no class. Yeah. Whoa. Come on, girls. Use yourselves. Yeah, let's we'll be right in a minute. I thought this was girls only. There's a pregnant woman inside who may need attention. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, I wonder who that is. Hold this, please. Thank you. Somebody here call for a doctor? Oh, no, you got the wrong apartment. Wrong. Oh, that's what you think, baby. Listen, would you look after Nancy? I'm on duty in 15 minutes. Oh, sure. Minutes. Okay. Oh, how lovely. Thank you, Nancy. May I take your coat? Yes. Okay. Hey, you fellas, hold it down. I'll lose my leaf. Look, I'm off duty at uh, midnight. I'll see you then. Well, hurry back. It looks like it's going to be fun. Hey, Phil. I didn't know you played the bass. Who plays? Ah! You're a genius. Oh, it's nothing. What do you want, some uh, scotch, uh, vodka, gin? What are you doing to my Saturday? What are you doing to my Saturday? Will you just taste it? Just taste it. I don't understand what you're doing. Yes, I do.
Well, Gloria isn't feeling too well, so... Oh, I'm sorry. Why don't I have a drink, honey? Well, I brought my own. Hey, good. Hey, if you're looking for the McNaughtons, they're in here. Yeah, we're having a little party. Won't you come and join us? We're having fun. something I want you to try. It's just a little bit. I got some oranges, you know. I don't know whether they're from Florida or California, but they're kind of nice. Yeah, try it and tell me what you think, huh? Mmm, it's good. It's good? Mm -hmm. Well, you just eat that one, and I'll just cut some more, okay? Mm -hmm. Oh, 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 look at this. Wait a minute. Mass production. Here we go. Guys, try the other halves. Bye, then. Oh. You all right, Nancy? Of course. It's an explosive combination. Cold hands on a warm shoulder. You accept my apologies? You're entirely forgiven. Have fun. I'll get another glass full. You work on that. Mm, it's different. Isn't that different? Mm. Yeah, all down. Pick it all down. It's good for you. It's orange juice. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Laura! I've been, I've been calling you for two weeks now, won't you? At least give me a chance to explain. You did all your explaining the day you minced into our dormitory. Honey, it was a bet. Besides, nothing happened. Because I interrupted you. Are you calling me a liar? Let's not argue. All right. Honey, may I make a suggestion? Choose for the duration of the party? I'll give it to you straight. We are not at war. I don't fight children. You are emotionally immature and sexually adolescent. What? And it's too bad you're not grown up because you are an attractive animal. But for this girl, that is simply not enough. E-N-U-F. I... I just don't understand you. It's very simple. It's just too bad you're not man enough to handle a lasting relationship. But I am, I am. What do you want? I want to get married. What do you want? May I have some of that? Oh, sure. There you go. Are you alone? No. Not if you're with me. Sure. Are you nervous about something? They tell me you're married. Not tonight. <laughs> Here you go, honey. I'll take that. Come here. Let me tell you something about vitamin C. You can drink all the vitamin C you want, and it'll never hurt you. It'll keep your skin nice and clear. It'll keep your lips... Nice and moist. Now, uh, let's uh, join the party, okay? Let me take your glass. Uh oh, sweetheart. Oh. You had enough. <laughs> Come on. Go ahead, honey. What stakes are we playing for? You ever heard of strip jacks? Oh. <laughs> Yeah. Okay.
like a man now. Well, whatever it is you're building, forget it. I think we've both said enough for one day. Not quite. You see, I saw you at the party with that, um, lady. I didn't see you. Obviously. Boy, you sure didn't waste any time. Well, now, um, but I don't know what the hell you expected. It's not as if I ran out into the night, bought a bottle of booze, and grabbed the first girl that tumbled my way. It wasn't my idea to go to that party alone. Did you have to be so damn public about it? My God, is that what's bothering you? How you look to the world? I can solve our whole problem. I'll put it up on the bulletin board tomorrow. Uh, tell everybody it's all my fault. Quote, Dr. Lewis Worship is incapable of making babies, and his wife, the former Gloria Mead, is blameless. How Don't about forget that? to put a P.S. on it. Dr. Worship's lovemaking capabilities are as good as ever. You're damn right. Oh, Gloria, look, I can give you that. I want to give you that. But you're asking something of me that's impossible. You want a miracle I can't provide. Gloria, for the last time, grow up before it's too late. I think it's already too late. Dr. Worship, any calls for me? 
Yes, but I'm leaving here now. Yeah, an operator. Take this number off. I'll be staying at the hospital till further notice. Come in, Nancy. Tell me of the chair, please. All right, Nancy. Can you hear me? Nancy, can you hear me? What is your name? What is your name? Nancy. Sorry, Tony. All right, nurse, you can take her back to her room now. Must be something you can do. Tony, you know that I've seen her an hour a day for the past five weeks, seven days a week. And the response is just what you saw here. Nothing. The chances are I could reach her, but I have no way of knowing how long it would take. It could be months, years, or never. You're not giving up. You've got to realize that we're dealing with a symptom. Nancy's real problem goes a lot deeper than we can see here. What are you talking about? Well, even if we could get her out of this catatonic state, she'd still require years of intensive treatment to find out the real cause of her instability. Yeah, yeah. Look, without going into a lengthy diagnosis, I think it's fair to say that Nancy is an unstable personality. She's one of those tender people who cannot deal with stress and pressures. Oh, she does fine as long as she's surrounded with people who love and care for her. But the minute that she's confronted with a, a situation involving stress, like that incident at the party, she's liable to go. All right, so I'll keep her away from parties. Any trivial incident involving stress and pressure is liable to set her off. That's double talk. That's psychiatric double talk. That's, that's some science, uh, psychiatry. If the science of surgery can't cure everyone, does that mean it's worthless? Now listen to me, Tony. I phoned that girl's parents. They're flying in tomorrow to take her home. Well, you know this hospital isn't equipped to take care of a long-range case like this. She'll have to be committed to a state institution. You or a private sanitarium. Tony, the trauma Nancy suffered with those boys was a terrible thing. But it was just a precipitating episode. Nancy is a lot sicker than you think. Give her up, Tony. Prognosis is not good. Tony, you've got to understand this. The relationship you had with Nancy is over. I'm sorry.
minutes, all right? Hurry up. I got a little work, I'll see you later. Dr. Considine, I presume. Mrs. Hitchcock, please don't report this. Those interns, with the hours they work, where do they get the time and energy? You belong to Dr. Osterman? Or is this one of those community deals? Would, would you mind terribly putting out that cigarette? It's making me nauseous. Oh. Has cigarette smoke always bothered you? Well, no, as a matter of fact, only recently. I see. Do you mind if I get personal, young lady? It's all right. I've been around here so long, you can talk to me like a nurse. Now tell me, when you get up in the morning, do you You're ever... trying to find out if I'm pregnant. I am. It's Dr. Osterman, isn't it? Naturally. It's always the quiet ones. Mrs. Hitchcock, as soon as we no. get inside, I'll give no. you an explanation. I I it's very it. simple if you would just listen no, to me. No, my mind is made up. Mrs. Hitchcock, Mrs. Hitchcock I, 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 am, I am begging you not to tell Dr. Riccio. You should be ashamed of yourself. Did you know that poor girl is pregnant? Well, of course. Don't you intend to do anything about it? What can I do? It may be an old-fashioned idea, but you could marry her. Marry her? I can't. She's already married. So is he. Oh. To each other. Oh, that makes everything all right. <laughs> Why didn't you tell me? Now, if a couple of the boys will just triple up, room 10 would make a perfect nursery. Mrs. Hitchcock, if you say anything at all, Madeline's going to have to go back to Ohio. Who's Madeline? I never met the lady. I hope it's a boy. Oh, Mrs. Hitchcock, don't make a fuss. And don't break any more rules than you have to. Ah! All right, Freddie, it's time to go. Freddie? I came here in a bigger bus. Yeah, but I bet this one's a lot faster. Come on, we don't want to keep the driver waiting. You just sit down right here. Why do I need a wheelchair? I can walk. Well, it's a hospital rule, Freddie. Everyone rides out when they're leaving. Now, come on. Atta boy. Okay? You glad to see me go? Why, no, Freddie. Why do you say that? You don't act like you want me to stay. So you must be glad to see me go. I don't want to go. And you can't stay here, Freddy. Hospital's just for sick people. You can't live in a hospital. You do. I thought you didn't like it here. I hate it. Then wouldn't you be happier back at the home? No. Where would you like to go, Freddy? I hate it everywhere. You hate me, too? No. You talk to me. I'm glad you don't hate me, Freddy. Miss Gloria. I'm ready. Mrs. Thompson. Freddy, Mrs. Thompson will take you down to the bus, okay? Come in. I uh, want to thank you for seeing me, Dr. Hellman. You know, I've tried, and the more I think about it, the more I realize that I just can't do it by myself. I, uh, I need professional help. Sit down, Considine. Thank you. Cigarette? Thank you, sir. You see, I uh, just can't sleep anymore thinking about it. You see, it's, uh, it's this girl, Laura. Now, I'm not exactly a new boy when it comes to women. I mean... I've had my share, and usually I give as good as I get. You know, nothing serious, just lots of fun, see? Well, I met this girl, and right away I figured it for a group three. That's an inkblot test I worked out to see when a girl's ready. Well, I figured I'd have to wear her down a little bit and then make a pitch on the third date. Instead, she made the first move. She said she was ready, R-E-D-D-Y. But when I tried to take her someplace, she said that wasn't the time. But when I was, I'd know, N-O. 
So I said, okay, okay, I get the message. She said, uh-uh, not all of it. And she kissed me like I thought she was coming out the other side. And that's the way it's been ever since. Hot, cold, hot, cold. Then she found me in the nurse's quarters. You see, the guys bet me I couldn't do it, but I did. Only she caught me kissing this girl, Bobby. Actually, Bobby was kissing me. I was just kind of standing there when Laura came in and misunderstood the whole thing. But at the party, she told me I wasn't mature enough to handle a lasting relationship. And I said to her, I said, I am, I am. What do you want? She said, I want to get married. What do you want? And that started me thinking. I know what I want. I want to be a good doctor, a psychiatrist. And I know it'll be a long pull before I have my own practice. But she wants to get married. And I'm not ready for that now or in the foreseeable future. The way I feel right this minute, I know damn well three months after we're married, I'd be off chasing again. That's the kind of guy I am. I'm tuned into lots of girls. Variety, that's what I need. I'm not ready to settle down with one yet. At this point in my life, marriage seems a hell of a complicated commitment to make just to ease my physical tensions. Of course. I'm barking up the wrong tree. She's a wonderful girl, and someday she might be ideal for me. But right now, we just destroy each other. Well, the honest thing to do is to tell her the truth about who I am and what I think. I've got too much work to do to waste my energy feeling guilty all my life. Dr. Hellman, I feel like a tremendous weight's been lifted off of me. Thanks. You really helped me a lot. Still gonna be a surgeon, huh? You know me, pal, I'd rather cut than cure any day. Boy, you guys really scare me. Tell me, is it true that the ideal of every surgeon is to take everything out of the patient? No, the ideal of every surgeon is to take everything out, but leave just enough to pay the bill. <laughs> Everybody available down to emergency. There's been a gang war, and it must be at least 40 of them, and they're cut pretty bad. Let's go, hey! Yeah, we're on our way. Take him upstairs, stack. Clear the way there. Dr. Ruin? It's all called superficial laceration. Keep as many as you can handle down here, send the rest upstairs. All right, get this man packed. All right, take him to x-ray. All right, you take over here. Okay? All right, Jim. Let's go through the motions. Description of assailant. Just put it down as attempted suicide, officer. I was despondent over my losses on Wall Street. Victim refuses to make statements. Take your lousy hands off of me! I'm a lady. Jack. Oh. Doctor, come quick, they're fighting! Get him! Come here! Come here! Come on! Okay, buddy! All right! That's it! That's it! All right, I'll strap you down. You either walk or I strap you down. Let's go. Now, buddy, get on that table. Hello, peep. Now, little man, I told you to get on that table. The doctor wants to examine you. Huh. You want to kill me? Get on that table! Now... You're gonna let me out of here. I'm gonna operate on you. Now, you hear me, doctor? Through me, beep. That's the only way. Well, you ain't brave, doc. You're just stupid. Or maybe you don't know how good I am with this thing. Good ones are still walking around outside, beep. Only the losers get wheeled in here. I'll cut you wide open. Hold this, you stupid boy scout. Uh, I, I didn't... I didn't do nothing, you girl. That's right, Beep. You didn't do nothing. He's hemorrhaging. Brilliant, give me a hand. Uh, 
easy. Get him right up to surgery. This is all yours, Tony. I've got too much work to do here. Can you handle it? Can you? I can handle it. Tony! How do you like that, punk? I get to work you over with a knife and it's all legal. Sixty over forty. This kid's gonna die before anybody lays a hand on him. Keep checking his pressure. What the hell's going on around here? Who's gonna work on this kid? I am. You are? Where's the surgical resident? He's busy. Wanna get on the phone and get somebody up here? I can do this. But this is a major abdominal wound. He hasn't got a chance. Clock. I know I can save him. Hi, hero. Hi, pal. Uh, 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 hey, hey, just relax now. Take it easy for a while. And what's the bad news? Uh, Dr. Duane says you'll have about 60% mobility in this hand. Yeah? Will I be able to wind my watch? Wind your watch? Sure. <laughs> well, that's all the psychiatrist needs. You can't let the patient stretch that 50-minute hour. <laughs> <laughs> hey, where's Tony? Uh, Tony's upstairs operating on that punk that cut you. Oh, no. Hey, that's the kid that raped Nancy. Better get up there, Lou. Tony's gonna kill him. Come on. Yeah, yeah, Nelly. Uh, Keep your arm up. More suction, I can't see. Sponge. Pressure's falling. That's the worst looking kettle of spaghetti I've ever seen. What is it? Hemorrhaging pancreas. Stick sponge. Looks like he's had it. Not if I can find that damned artery and tie it off. His systolic almost gone. More vasopressor. Get out of here, Pirelli. Cover those intestines with saline packs while I scrub. You're not taking over, Lou. I know what I'm doing. Clark? Let him alone, Lou. He's doing all right. Nurse. Hold that protractor. Yes, doctor. Heart tones are distant. Come on. Come on, baby. I got it. I got the artery. Curve mail. Keep it dry, for God's sake. 50 over 20. Pulse weakening. We're whipping it. Hold that clamp. Very good. Very good, Tony. More suction, damn it! Easy. Easy now. You're doing great. You're doing just great. I can't keep this pressure up much longer. How much more time do you need? Half an hour. I can't even promise you five minutes. Clamp. Clamp! The oscilloscope is almost gone. Hurry, Tony, hurry. Scissors. Blood pressure, zero. Pulse zero. Double O silk. The oscilloscope is flat. He's gone, Tony. The hell he is! Hot massage. We got five minutes before the oxygen burns up. Give it up, Tony. He's dead. Shut up! I found that artery. I'll bring him back. What color's too blue? Soak him with oxygen. That's it, Tony. It's all over. I lost it, Lou. I lost it. He never had a chance, Tony. We know that. Yeah. You can't win them all. There you are. Oh, thank you. Am I being punished for something? 
What do you mean? I haven't heard from you for over two weeks. Oh, it's uh, been that long? Are you changing your tactics, doctor? No, no. Same old Considine. Same hard-working intern who likes all the girls, present company included. Oh, thanks. Loads. No, honey, I, I, I meant that seriously. You know, ever since you told me you wanted to get married, why, uh, I've been doing a lot of thinking about us, and I've come to the conclusion that of all the girls I know, I like you best of all. Oh, thank you. But marriage, uh-uh, not now. No. Maybe that's immature, but all I want right now is for you and me to have fun. The rest might come later, but I'm making no promises and I'm giving no commitments. I'm sorry, but that's the way it is. And if you find it's too much to take, why, you'll just have to hold out your carrots for some other rabbit. That's the most amazing speech you've ever made. You fascinate me. You're so honest. And anybody who's mature enough to admit he's immature deserves to have anything he wants. Honey, you've got a deal. Oh, wait a minute. Just like that? No arguments? Well, of course not. I think it's a great arrangement. Hey, well, let me get this straight. Uh, you're going to go along with what I said, fun and games? You're, you're going to take me the way I am. You're not going to try to change me. Change you? What for? You're perfect just the way you are. What kind of a wife do you think I'm going to be? <laughs> I don't know why I waste my time with you. You're a damn fool hardhead, and I don't think you'll ever learn. Any first-year student knows you don't take on a patient that you're personally involved with, and what an involvement. Everybody in this hospital knows you wanted that boy to die, and die he damn well did. I didn't kill him. Maybe not, but we'll let that go for a moment. Now, you look, Pirelli. You've applied for a surgical residency at this hospital, but I'm not sure I want you around. You're like a lit fuse. I don't want the responsibility for a man who might blow up at any minute. And use his scalpel as a weapon? Dr. Rizzo. You shut up! Have you got anything to say? Yes, I do. You're wrong about me, but you don't have the guts to admit it. Now, maybe I wanted that kid to die at first. God knows I had enough reason. But up there, I tried my damnedest to save that punk. For only one reason. Because he was a patient. And whether you want to admit it to yourself or not, you taught me what that means. And now I suppose you want to make a speech. Yes, I would like to say a few words. Before you go tying an ash can on Tony Pirelli, you might like to know what he says is true. In that operating room, he was as good a surgeon as this place has ever turned out. Procedures were outstanding. You would have rated it excellent. I'll tell you how he found that lousy artery, I'll never know. It was like uh, tying two rubber bands together inside a broken golf ball. But he did it. And present company accepted there are damn few others around here that could have matched his work. Well, thank you, doctor. If you ever get tired of medicine, perhaps you'd consider starting over again as a lawyer. Tom, it looks to me like you've got a tiger by the tail. Two of them, I'd say. Here. You gonna let Pirelli go? I don't know. I don't know. Dr. Lowe! Well, Freddy, what are you doing here? It's my day to visit. Visit? Miss Gloria. She told me to wait here. She has to sign out. What do you mean it's your day to visit? Well, first she comes to visit me, then I go to visit her. Then she, then me. You mad at me? No. Why would I be? You never come to visit. Well, nobody ever asked me. You mad at me? Uh-uh. Hey, what do you and Gloria do on these visits? Oh, lots of things. Gloria took me to the circus and bought me popcorn and ice cream. She's like a real mommy. Hi, Freddy. Hello, Gloria. Hello, Lou. I, uh, I understand you've been seeing another man. From time to time. Oh, but you know what they say in the gossip columns? We're just very good friends. Oh, serious as all that. Yes. As a matter of fact, when Freddie and I first started going out together, I didn't think it would work. Now I think I'm grown up enough for him. Hey, I'm hungry. Where are we going to eat today? Oh, uh, how about that pancake place? Yeah. Can I invite him? 
sure if he'd like to. He'd like to very much. to report, Pete. In two days. Hey, I just figured it out. What? As interns, we were paid 40 a month, right? Right. Considering we average 14 hours a day, I figured that we were paid at the rate of 32 cents an hour for the year. So? So, I'm on my way to Detroit General. As a resident in pediatrics, I will be getting 92.50 a month. I'll be rich! Hey, you know, I think you chose the right specialty. It's good for a pediatrician to have a childish mind. <laughs> You've waited a long time for this, haven't you, Doctor? You can say that again. Congratulations, Dr. Riccio. You're a very persuasive man. You know the funny part about all this? The only thing new about that sign is the part that says to be wrecked by. This place was on the condemned list when I was an intern. <laughs> when are the records going to start? It's like they've already begun. Up there. I'm sorry, it's the first time I've ever had this window all the way open. You in a hurry? Maybe you don't mind waiting, Lou, but I got lots of work to do. Cooling my heels in Herr Riccio's office is not my idea of a fun afternoon. So he's a half hour late. With the hours this guy puts in, who's got a better right? Besides, he's enjoying himself today. They okayed the new building. Does that make it some kind of national holiday? Hey, buddy, bud. You know, after what happened, Riccio could have shipped you halfway around the world, hmm? Instead, he gave you the residency you wanted here. Now, you got three years ahead of me. Don't start off on the wrong foot. I'm not going to kiss his foot, that's for sure. Nobody wants you to kiss anybody's foot. Just try doing things without so much heat. Think a minute before you open your mouth. Some people call it tact. Uh... Dr. Riccio. Yes, what is Look, it? I've been waiting at your office. And? And I may have got the appointment mixed up. Do you want to see me today or tomorrow? Today. I'll be there in 10 minutes. Yes, sir. Worship? Doctor? Now, that wasn't so hard, was it? Miss Raines, would you make a note for me, please? I want all incoming interns assembled in the auditorium at 4.30 this afternoon. Make sure the residents go on double shift to cover the transition period. I want a complete pharmaceutical inventory. 